Hey YouTube, this is The Art of Prepping. Today I like to talk about multi-tools and to make this more like an update video to previous videos of commentaries on multi-tools. And I've been getting some questions about this. This is kind of what prompted me to do this. It's, this could be kind of a, a longer video, not for sure. Um, I have a lot of notes that I want to go over. I'm going to try to do this in a very condensed way, though, because I don't want to really come off really long-winded. Uh, but basically, the objective here is to go through a list of brands and just to tell you what I think of them. Um, there's a lot of people who just are looking at different brands and they don't really have any idea. And so I don't have like firsthand experience with all the brands, obviously, but I know people that uh, that do have some of these other brands. And so I'll chime in when appropriate. So when it comes to multi-tools, there's all different types of multi-tools. Um, there are like uh, various hatchets and axes, believe it or not, that have various tools on them, um, all the way down to what we would typically consider what a traditional multi-tool is, like something you can put in your pocket or on your key ring. And so those are the ones that I'm talking mostly about today. Uh, there will probably be a few brands that will pop up here uh, that don't really make the traditional multi-tool, but they make other types of multi-tools. So they may be brought up, uh, but just kind of know um, that there's different types. So <clears throat> first off, I just want to jump into some of the house brands. And I want to, you know, kind of put this out here first off that as I go through the list, for various reasons, they're mostly because of uh, political reasons and in-house uh, policies, like store policies, that have led me to boycott certain brands uh, and or certain stores. And so just know that going into this, um, I'm not someone that's like uh, always looking for a reason to boycott someone. No, but... I do have certain uh, lines in the sand, and if you cross those lines, uh, I'm not going to give you any money because I don't believe in what you believe in. And uh, so that's that's basically what is going on here. And so when it comes to some of these in-house brands like uh, Ozark Trail, made by Walmart, or Magellan, uh, made by Academy Sports, or Field and Stream, made by Dick Sporting Goods. Um, I boycott them uh, because mainly of their politics and the things that they support, um, I do not believe in. So that's that. Uh, when it comes to the Redhead brand from Cabela's um, and some of the uh, other in house brands from Bass Pro, and I'm not even familiar with a lot of those, they have a lot of in house brands there. You know, from what I understand and have seen when I've gone into those stores, that their products when it comes to like multi-tools are kind of just average at best. Um, I have some friends that have bought some of those brands and they don't really have any kind of major problems. I asked about it and they said, yeah, that they're okay, but they're a little bit on the cheaper side. Uh, they're typically imported products, obviously. And so, you know, you kind of get what you pay for. You know, when it's $20, $30, well you're going to just get kind of an, a very average tool. So, you know, I would kind of, if I were you, I would just save a little more money and get something a little nicer. But, you know, in a pinch, they could work. In terms of other brands that a lot more people would recognize, let's go ahead and start with some of those. And, and mixed in, I'm going to put in some brands that you may not be as familiar with. So here we go. <coughs> First off, a uh, SOG. A lot of people think of SOG knives and they go back for, you know, a good ways and they have some really interesting designs. Their multi-tools are real hit and miss. If you watch any reviews uh, online, there's typically, you know, a good number of them. If not in certain models, all of people that review them that will say things like, man, you know, it just wasn't very durable or mine broke or you know, the tools were just not well designed, you know, the implements in the tool. And what you'll see is that these products are imported and the pricing on them is 
typically fairly good. You know, it's fair at least. It's not what I would consider high value unless you got them like on a deep sale. But SOG products are just, you know, they, they look good. You know, um, they're very tempting. And they may work for you. I mean, there are certain models of their multi-tools that get a lot better reviews than others. But I'm here to tell you, though, that the quality really isn't there compared to other brands. And let's move to that other brand, for example, that really is a, a better quality. And that's going to be some of the uh, the higher, uh, you know, quality models of Leatherman. Leatherman definitely has several levels of quality. And the problem, though, with Leatherman right now, even though they're a U.S. company that makes everything, you know, in-house, and I, I really like that a lot. So I'm a real big fan of that aspect of Leatherman, U.S.-made products. The problem, though, is that they've really gone up in price. I mean, good Lord, the inflation for Leatherman multi-tools is really just outrageous at this point. And some of their newer designs, <clears throat> like the new uh, magnetic series of multi-tools, uh, they call it the free line, you know, it, it doesn't connect with me at all. Like, I don't have any interest <laughs> at all. I mean, it just isn't there. <clears throat> And the pricing on these new multi-tools is just, in my opinion, outrageous. So even on some of their older models, you know, they've gone up so much that it's just they're pricing themselves out of the market. And I've got a lot of friends that are like, man, they're, they're just getting too expensive. People are still buying them because they're still really good. And in some ways, they're kind of like, still the benchmark, you know, I mean, I think they really are the benchmark for most people when it comes to the ideal multi-tool, but it's one of those things that you really pay for it. So, um, I would kind of always be on the, the lookout though for sales and things. And what happened here in 2019, because at the time of this video, it's October, 2019, uh, a number of months ago, I'm not for sure what, five or six months ago, there was about a month that there were ongoing uh, discounts on Amazon concerning uh, multi-tools. And uh, there was a few other sites as well that were participating in this. They were like, uh, it was like a factory authorized sale. Apparently, Leatherman has a really tight rein on the price uh, that, it, that you can sell them for. But there were like discounts, I think around like 20 percent range that were and that was really kind of a surprise uh, i think it was like 20 25 percent off for a period of time there and um so there was there were some pretty fair deals going on in some ways maybe you, you could even consider it maybe like high value at that point uh but yeah you definitely look for those sales that happen you know uh not very often but when they do that's kind of like the good time to buy if you will for leatherman what about gerber you know, Gerber is also another brand that um, has gotten a little more expensive over time. But if you really wait and you're patient and they go on sale, sometimes they go on sale in a fashion that's very agreeable. Um, I've seen sometimes them that they drop 40, 45 percent on Amazon, you know, for a very short period of time, though. We're talking about just maybe an hour or two and then they go back to full price. But... <clears throat> There's definitely some some models that Gerber makes in when it comes to multi-tools that are very good. Um, the U.S. military has a, an ongoing contract with them, so that should say something. The MP600 you know, it seems to be a very popular model, but they have different uh, variations of that. Quite a few variations of the MP600, and I think the MP400 is also uh, another very popular um, you know, size and, and, and format. Um, so they have different variations of that as well. And so, yeah, overall, I think Gerber is good. Uh, you just kind of have to do some research ahead of time to make sure that you're getting the one that you really want and, you know, getting a model that doesn't have like inherent problems. Um, so there you go. A uh, Victorinox. Absolutely. Uh, I think they're very high value in particular, if you get them on sale and they do go on sale all the time on Amazon. And I'm not sure about other sites, but on Amazon.com here in the U.S., they're constantly going on sale. Uh, this model and then that model. And, you know, especially like when you have the holiday season specials coming up here, 
it's just going to be unbelievable. Sometimes you can find them for like 45% off. And um, so it's a great opportunity. Um, I've even seen them lower than that. So just check them out and uh, keep an eye on the ones that you want and scoop them up when they, when they drop in price. But yeah, they're definitely high value. Now, when we're talking about the full featured, full size Victorinox multi tools, uh, th they definitely are expensive. <clears throat> At least to me, they are. You know, when you get over $100, to me, that's, that's getting expensive. But they really are well made. You know, the materials are good. The fit and finish is excellent. So when you compare the upper lines of like Victorinox versus Leatherman, just from what I've been able to see, the Victorinox is a better multi-tool in terms of, you know, the actual fit and finish and, and even the, the design to some degree. <clears throat> of course, that's, you know, subjective and uh, a, a bit controversial, but because some people would say definitely the design is better with the Leatherman. Uh, but most people would agree, though. I mean, everybody that I know would agree, but I think most people out in the world would agree that the fit and finish is better with Victorinox. So, you know, you kind of get what you paid for. Um, it's pretty rare, though, to see the larger full featured Victorinox go on sale. Uh, those typically are a little more rare, but they're really awesome. So I, I highly recommend those, though. Uh, but I do support, once again, U.S. made products. So as much as I have to say that I don't like some of the pricing on the upper end stuff that Leatherman has, if you catch them on sale, they're, they're a pretty good deal. So there you go. <clears throat> CRKT. I personally don't have any experience with CRKT's multi-tools. I do have a lot of experience with their knives. So I, I deferred this question to someone else, uh, a friend of mine, and, and they have several CRKT multi-tools. And uh, I also watched a number of reviews, and this is this kind of goes for a lot of these um, these different brands that I don't have in my own possession, or if I don't have experience, um, I'll ask friends and family that have the brand, uh, and or uh, I'll go and do um, a number of uh, viewing, uh, you know, of videos uh, from people I trust that that review things here on YouTube, and what I see though <clears throat> with CRKT is that. It looks like that there definitely could be some things that are good. Um, so I'm just going to keep it open into there. And uh, I don't really see any kind of like red flags, you know. Uh, so there you go. Um, Kershaw, um, I have a few knives that are kind of like hybrid tools. Uh, but in terms of like their dedicated multi-tools, I don't have any. But from what I can see, you know, from reviews and from a few friends that have some of their multi-tools, they're good to go. Uh, in fact, they might even be high value. Um, so there you go there. Um, Klecker, uh, they tend to be pretty expensive from my experience of looking them up. I think they're very uh, innovative. I think they're really cool products, but they're just expensive. I mean, you really pay for what you get. Uh, so I don't really see a lot of like high value deals going on there. But if you just love their designs, if you love being able to kind of put together your own multi-tool to some degree, um, there you go. So um, I don't write them off, but personally, they're just it's just too expensive for me to justify. Um, so unless there was a really deep sale going on and I was just really into their stuff, I don't think I would pretty, pretty much buy into it. Uh, Boker, this is one of those things that um, I kind of feel like Boker is a hit and miss company overall in terms of quality. Some of their models of their pocket knives I've really liked in the past. Some of them really just missed the mark. And when I looked at their multi-tools, even though I don't have any of their multi-tools, some of them look really nice in the pictures. Uh, but you're really going to pay for it. And their prices are pretty high. And so I don't have any, and my friends don't have any Boker multi tools. But I did watch a number of reviews uh, in the in the recent time and uh, concerning these multi tools. And I have to say that most people are pretty much okay and happy with them. Uh, but once again, you know, if you don't catch them on sale, you're going to really pay for it. Uh, Uzi, the Uzi brand is something that's. Uh, it's, it's pretty unique and interesting, you know, uh, on, on the outside looking in. 
Uh, but really, they're kind of cheesy in my opinion. Uh, I used to kind of, you know, get into some of their pens and uh, until I realized how cheap they were. And, and I've kind of upgraded my pens from there. And I'm, I'm talking about the tactical pens. But yeah, the Uzi brand to me is kind of cheesy cheap. Uh, I don't recommend them. Uh, maybe for a beginner, they could work. You know, some of their multi-tools uh, possibly could be an option. But for me, I just avoid them. So I, I just can't recommend them. Uh, Spyderco, uh, a lot of people don't know that they have multi-tools as well. Uh, to me, they're a little bit on the larger size. You know, the ones that are like, you know, like the pocket knife size multi-tools, um, they don't really connect with me. And I love Spyderco knives. Let me tell you, it's like my favorite brand. But I just don't connect with their multi-tools. So that's just me, though. And you may have no problem with them. The prices seem to be a little high. Uh, but across the board, Spyderco knives and tools seem to be gone, gone up over the years, just like Leatherman products. So there's definitely uh, that going on. Uh, in terms of uh, Smith & Wesson, um, really, I think you can do better than some of the stuff that they, they put out. So I just don't buy them. Uh, your mileage may may vary. Uh, you can get things pretty inexpensive, though, from Smith & Wesson. But it doesn't really mean that you would be happy with them. Because from what I've seen, the quality is real hit and miss. And it's more miss than anything else. And even though in the last year I've gotten a few Smith & Wesson pocket knives that have been very good, it doesn't mean, though, that everything is good. And that's what I've learned over the years. Um, when it comes to Swiss tech, uh, man, I've had some really bad experience with Swiss tech. Uh, my Swiss tech products were made in China. And uh, I've broken everything that I've gotten from them. And some of them have lasted a couple years. And I'm, I'm talking about mostly like their keychain multi-tools. But man, I'm telling you, um, they're just not made very well. And uh, I wish they were a lot more durable. So I can't recommend them. Uh, Charade. Charade is also a company that's been like in the hands of different owners. And the quality has gone up and down and all kinds of drama in that company. And I do have a number of Charade knives. More of like their outdoor camping and survival type of line of knives. And for the most part, they're okay. That's about as far as I would go with that. And looking at their multi-tools... They look really cheesy, and honestly, I would not buy them. I, you can definitely do better. Let's just say that. I mean, they are definitely imported products that really don't have, uh, from what I can see and what I've the little bit that I've read about, uh, they're just not something that um, a lot of people are happy with. They're, they're a little more bulky than what people realize. Uh, it's not to say that they don't work, because they a lot of people, lot of people say that they do work and they're okay. But they do realize that there's other better options. Uh, the The Wallet Ninja, um, some of their models can be very expensive. Uh, I personally don't get into a lot of the gimmicks like credit card size multi-tools. I do have some, um, but I don't really pay much for them if I get them. Uh, so when it comes to really super expensive <laughs> the Wallet Ninja multi-tools, uh, I think I'm just going to pass on that. 511, they have some multi-tools. I have no experience with them. My friends don't own any of those either. I did look up a few videos on them. They look like they're pretty cool. Sometimes the pricing on these are a little high, uh, at least from what it appears that they're, they're offering. But once again, I don't really have any data points on this, but um, you may check them out. But I, I kind of get a feeling, though, that you can probably get more for your money with other brands. <clears throat> uh, Smith's. Smith's is kind of more known for the like their knife sharpeners. And uh, they do a good job with those. But over the years, when I've bought some of their multi-use products, like products that have like multiple uh, features, it's almost like the more features they add on a product, the worse the product is. And so I would just stick with their sharpeners and not go with their multi-tools. Uh, that's just kind of what I've seen over the time. The next is uh, Rake. Uh, it's, it's spelled R-U-I-K-E. And they're an awesome company. It's an imported company. Well, they, they import their stuff um, uh, into the U.S. Uh, from China. It's a Chinese company, to my knowledge. <clears throat> and, and they're definitely a little more on the higher end side. 
and uh, the quality is there. Uh, the pricing is is very fair and reasonable. I think it's a high value company. Uh, I personally do not own any, but I've actually checked them out before. I've seen them. Um, I don't have any friends that actually own this product either, but I do have a lot of, uh, you know, time watching videos from gear reviewers that I respect. And I, I'd say that this is this is a pretty good to go company brand. And um, so definitely check them out and, and consider them. Uh, Kilimanjaro. <clears throat> this is a brand that I find really intriguing. They have some interesting, very unique and innovative designs. Uh, typically when they come out with something or when they have a new batch made, they sell out really fast on a number of sites, including even Amazon. They'll just sell out. And then they'll be sold out for like weeks or even months before they restock. So uh, obviously this is, uh, from what I understand, um, an overseas made uh, product. But it's pretty good, though. It's actually pretty good. It seems like it's pretty good quality. Uh, it, it may appear to be more like a budget brand because of the pricing, but it's actually pretty good quality from what I see. So it could be an option if you can get your hands on one. Uh, the Fox brand, ah, you know, um, to my knowledge, they make Fox products in several countries. Um, I know that they, they, they make them from uh, Italy, and I think that's their home base. But I do believe that there's a few other uh, countries that they have things coming out of. Uh, the Fox brand, there's no doubt that it's good quality. It's actually very high quality. And if you can afford them, then go for it. To me, it's just too expensive. It, it's just, it's something that I would not call high value, uh, but it is good quality stuff. So you definitely pay for the quality, um, but it's good. So that's what it is. Uh, Camillus brand. You know, when I was a kid, Camillus was known as like the go-to company for multi-tools. And that was like the company that my parents went to first to get myself my first multi-tool when I was in the Boy Scouts. <clears throat> and I still have that multi-tool and it's super great, super high quality. And over the years, you know, um, the original Camillus company kind of went out of business or they kind of like, uh, I don't know if you want to call it going out of business or they just sewed out uh, to someone else. So they kind of changed hands. And so there's a different group now running Cam Camillus. And to me, it's not the same quality at all. And I've checked out their stuff, you know, over the last few years. And I mean, the stuff that you find at big box stores from them, it, it's just horrendous. It's horrible. Just horrible quality. I would not even consider their, their stuff. Now, apparently they have upper line stuff, uh, some fixed blades and so forth. that they, they appear to be pretty nice. So apparently they have multiple lines of quality. And so definitely try to get some of their better quality stuff if you want to buy from them. When it comes to their multi-tools, I just haven't found any that I liked. So, and I have no, you know, experience with them and my friends, they don't like their products. Uh, so they haven't really gotten anything recently either. So I don't know what to say. Um, I did look up some videos on them and, you know, people are, are okay with some of their stuff, but uh, more so a lot of people are just kind of a bit disappointed. So that's about all I can say on that. Uh, Bear and Son, their multi-tools are on the cheaper side uh, in terms of quality. That's just kind of what I see and what I hear. Um, I don't own any of them. Uh, I have a friend that actually owns one, and he's like, eh, it's just real cheesy. You know, for $20-some, dollars, you're, you're getting what you pay for and nothing more. It's not special. It's not high value. You know, so definitely just, you know, be aware of what their stuff is. And so Bear and Son, they do have some really nice pocket knives and, and fixed blades. So they do have good products, but they kind of just like, when it comes to the multi-tool line, they just kind of import stuff and stamp their name on it. That's what it seems like what's going on. Uh, Baladio, um, I don't really own any Baladio uh, products. Uh, my friends don't, and there's not like a lot of reviews online, but from what I can gather, they're definitely on the cheaper side. They're just imported products. You know, if you're on a really, really tight budget, maybe it could be an option, but it's, there seems to be a lot better options out there than Bladio products. Uh, buck knives, a lot of people forget that buck knives have multi-tools. They have all different types. You know, I think they have some good stuff. Um, it may not be for you because they have a lot of very specific types of uh, purposed, 
purpose made multi tools. But I have to say that buck knives, you know, I have a lot of great uh, experience with them, you know, and, and really good experience and good good results with their stuff. And so I would definitely say give them a look, you know, and consider them. Uh, Black Fox, you know, is it a budget item, you know, item or a budget line of stuff? Yeah, they're budget stuff. Is it high quality? I don't know. I, I don't own any. I don't know anybody that owns Black Fox products. They look a little bit cheap, to be completely honest with you. Uh, there's pretty much almost like no reviews of their stuff. So I don't really know. Uh, I wouldn't take a chance on something, you know, that's just kind of sketchy like their stuff. So I don't know. Maybe they're okay, but I would just probably go elsewhere. Um, Extrema Ratio, <clears throat> um, a European made, uh, you know, multi-tool company and they also make like tactical knives and they're very high end in some ways, but you're really paying for it. I mean, the prices are just outrageous in my opinion. Um, yeah, if you just have, if you're very, very wealthy and you can just throw money, it could be an option. For me, though, just if I had all that money, I would just get me, you know, a really high end Leatherman and a really high end uh, Victorian Knox and just call it a day. Uh, but definitely there are some people who don't mind paying the price. But for me, it's just they, they have priced themselves out of, of consideration. Uh, Ultimate Survival Technologies, they have some multi tools or some survival gear that's they're considering multi tools. Um, they're, they're real cheesy in my opinion. I've had a number of their products, you know, break down, uh, wear out quick. And I just, I'm not impressed. Uh, it's typically just stuff made from China. I don't know. Their designs are not as robust as I would like. And so, yeah, their stuff isn't that expensive. So it's, it's a bit appealing at first, but you get what you pay for. Um, Ontario, they have a, a few things that might be considered a multi-tool. They have some like uh, line cutters, like rescue cutters and things like that. Um, I think they're great. You know, I, I don't have a problem at all with Ontario. And lastly, Benchmade. Um, I boycott Benchmade because of politics and things that they've done and how their, their companies run and just the whole gamut, you know. And it's not to say that Benchmade doesn't have good products. And some of their uh, more like multi-use uh, tools, um, you know, it's not to say that they aren't good. I'm sure that they, there are some of them that really are good. Uh, but for me, I boycott them uh, end of story. So there's my kind of my lineup there. I uh, hope this wasn't too long of a video. Hope you kind of maybe, you know, walked away with a little bit more information than you did before. And maybe there's a few brands that you didn't know about. Um, so... Uh, that you now now know about. So, you know, just take a moment and do some comparisons before you buy anything when it comes to like multi-tools to get the one that you really want. Uh, thanks for checking out the video. Catch you later.